So, in this lecture, I will talk about gravitation. Well, Newton at the age of 23 is said to have seen an apple falling down from the tree in his orchard and this year was 1665 and he started thinking about the role of earth's attraction in the motion of moon and other heavenly bodies. So, we have Newton's universal law of gravitation. Let me talk about Newton's universal law of gravitation. And this Newton's law of gravitation states that every body in this universe attracts every other body with the force which is directly proportional to the product of their masses. Suppose there are two masses m1 and m2 and inversely proportional to the square of the distances between them. So, here suppose this is mass m1 and this is mass m2 and there is a distance r. All right. So, f is directly proportional to m1 and m2 divided by r square or f is equal to g into m1 m2 over r square. So, g is universal gravitational constant. Now, let us note down some important point. The value of g was obtained in laboratory was determined by a scientist Cavendish and this method was using torsional balance. Okay. One second. All right. Now, the value of G is uh, 6.67 into 10 raised to the power minus 11 and the unit is going to be Newton meter square kg minus 2. All right, it is pretty easy to figure it out. So, here g is going to be f dot r square upon m1 and m2. So, that is f is Newton unit, r is meter square and this is kg square. All right. So, now let us move to the third important point. So, this is the unit in SI system. If we talk about uh, CGS system, CGS, then it is going to be 6.67 into 10 raised to the power minus 8. And then we will write like this, dyne centimeter square and g minus 2 that is gram. All right. Now, we will talk about another point that is dimensional formula. So, the dimensional formula let me write here. Oh, let me just correct this. So, the dimensional formula dimensional formula is m raised to the power minus 1 l cube and t minus 2. Well, it is pretty easy to figure it out. Let me just show it to you. The Newton is force is equal to m a mass l t minus 2 that is force and then distance square that is l square divided by mass and mass. So, it gets cancelled. So, you have m minus 1 and this is l 3 and 
t minus 2. This is t, so this is t minus 2. The next interesting point, the next interesting point is, well, the value of g does not depend upon the nature of medium between the two bodies. So, it does not depend upon the nature of medium between the bodies. So, here if there are two bodies here, whatever the medium is there, the force does not depend on that. The next interesting point is that is point number 6. The g is very small. You can see here 10 raised to the power minus 11. g is very small. Hence, the force or the gravitational forces are also very small. Unless we are dealing with huge masses unless unless m is very large and that is the reason this kind of forces are much prominent with the heavenly bodies now let's talk about some properties of gravitational force so number 1 the gravitational force is always attractive All right, not like electric and magnetic forces which can be attractive or repulsive. Number two, we have already studied that the gravitational force is independent of the medium. Independent of medium. So, the second point is that the gravitational force is independent, independent of medium. It is independent of medium between the particles. All right. You should be knowing that electric and magnetic forces, they depend on the nature of medium between the particles. Third, the force of gravitation holds good over a wide range of distance. I think we should write here holds good for any distance, for wide, I think it is better to say wide wide range of distances. So, whether we are talking about interplanetary or interatomic distances, they hold good. Secondly, the force of uh, gravitation or gravitational force is the central force. And central force means it they act along the line joining the centers of two interacting bodies. So, suppose this is one body and there is another body and there is a center here and there is a center here. So, this force is going to act along the line joining the centers. Next point. It is the weakest force in nature. So, the nuclear force is the greatest, then electromagnetic force, all 
and then gravitational. So, gravitational force is the weakest one and you may be wondering like if we compare if we compare the gravitational force to the electrostatic force. So, F gravitational divided by F electrostatic. Then the order is 10 raised to the power minus 43. You can imagine how uh, weak is the gravitational force. Now, let us talk about this conceptual question which says the gravitational force between two objects does not depend on sum of the masses, product of the masses, gravitational constant, distance between the masses. So, we know it very well force is equal to F is equal to G into M 1 M 2 over R square. So, obviously, it depends on gravitational constant, it depends on the distance and it also depends on the product of the masses. So, the correct option is this one sum of the masses. So, let us talk about this question which says that the mass m is divided into two parts that is x m and 1 minus x m. For a given separation, the value of x for which the gravitational attraction between the two points become maximum is and then we need to figure it out. So, we know that gravitational force is going to be F is equal to G into M 1 M 2 over R square. So, G M 1 is uh, X M and M 2 is uh, 1 minus X M over R square or we can say G M square over R square. We have taken these values and here we get x into 1 minus x. So, let me emphasize here. So, this m and this m we have taken together. Okay. Now, for maximum value of uh, force df by dx should be equal to 0. So, if that is the value of 0, that means d upon dx and the bracket g m square over r square into x into 1 minus x should be equal to 0. We know it very well that uh, this is the value, this is the constant. So, we can write d upon dx x minus x square is equal to 0. why we need to solve this. So, so differentiation of x is 1 and this is minus 2 x is equal to 0. This means x is going to be 1 by 2. So, we need to see the option and when we realize that option A is correct. I think everybody, I have assumed that everybody is familiar with the calculus. So, differentiation of x is 1 and the differentiation of x square is 2x. So, now let us study about this question and which says the mass of the moon is about 1.2 percent of the mass of the earth. Compared to the gravitational force, the earth exerts on the moon the gravitational force the moon exerts on the earth is same as the smaller is greater varies with its phase. So, earth and moon both exert the same force on each other. So, the option A is the correct option. Whether this is earth 
and this is moon both are going to exert the same force on each other so let me describe about this problem here there are two metal spheres of same material so these two metal spheres are of same material and equal radius and they have equal radius r so here this is r and this is also r and both are touching each other show that the force of attraction between them the force of attraction between them is directly proportional to that we need to figure it out what exactly is that whether it is r square or r is to the power 3 or r is to the power 4 generally what uh, we have seen that many guys will try to put this answer which is absolutely incorrect so let me explain the solution here F is going to be G into M1, M2 over R square. That is R is the distance. But we know it very well. The distance is going to be 2R. We need to take the distance between the center of masses. And also we know it very well that the density is equal to mass over volume. So mass is equal to volume into density we can write volume as 4 by 3 pi r cube and the density we can write as rho so the value of force will be f g will be 4 by 3 pi r cube into rho and then again 4 by 3 pi r cube into rho divided by rr 2r square now if you see carefully this is on the top it is r raised to the power 6 and on the bottom it is r raised to the power 2 rest will be constant so the force f will be directly proportional to r raised to the power 4 so this is the correct answer